my fellow Americans, Memorial Day is a day of ceremonies and speeches. Throughout America today, we honor the dead of our wars. We recall their valor and their sacrifices. We remember they gave their lives so that others might live. The unknown soldier who has returned to us today and whom we lay to rest is symbolic of all our missing sons. About him, we may well wonder as others have. Did he marry? Did he have children? Did he look expectantly to return to a bride? We'll never know the answers to these questions about his life. We do know, though, why he died. He saw the horrors of war and bravely faced them. Certainly his own cause and his country's cause was a noble one that he was fighting for human dignity, for free men everywhere. Let us, if we must, debate the lessons learned at some other time. Today, we simply say with pride, thank you, dear son. May God cradle you in his loving arms. We welcome you to St. Mark's, the Evangelists, as we come to celebrate the Feast of the Ascension of our Lord. We welcome our celebrants, Father Raphael, Father Dominic, assisted by Deacon Roger. And now let us begin in song as we worship the Lord. Hail the festival day. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Uh, that is the last week when we do not celebrate the Mass in public, but next week, uh, in a very joyful uh, way, we'll celebrate Pentecost. Um, Father Dominic prepared a very nice decoration. I don't know if you can see a little bit. Uh, there is Jesus who is lifting up he's going up to heaven and there are three uh kids actually they symbolize the disciples so at the beginning of this eucharist what i'm asking you for uh, just to focus or raise your eyes to the lord because from him our help is coming from so we might be like these three kids sitting and watching up not down so i'm asking you especially during this eucharist uh, uh, to all of you who are watching this mass to raise your eyes to the Lord, not to look down, but to the one who raised from the dead and he's giving us the eternal life. 
And during this Holy Eucharist, we pray. Uh, Father Dominic is praying for Sam and Anna Schmitz. Uh, I pray for this is Raymond Johnson. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you gave God word to your followers. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you prayed for them as you left this world. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you called them and us to continue your work. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We pray to, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us us with holy joys, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head has, has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theopolis, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, 
will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. All people clap your hands, cry to God with shouts of joy. For the Lord was God, we must fear, great King over all the earth. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. God goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. Sing praise for God, sing praise for God, sing praise to our King. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. God is King of all the earth. Sing praise with all your might. God is King over the nations. He reigns on his holy throne. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones? and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe, in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I am with you till the end of the world. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to, Glory to you, O Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, 
to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshiped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I know that this is the last Sunday when we do not have a public Mass. So actually, uh, I would like to uh, take this opportunity maybe to have a longer homily this time because we know that one of the suggestions from the bishop was having uh, shorter homilies when the mass will be open, you know, the public. So at least today I can <laughs> use this opportunity because I know that you all are sitting nice in the sofas or chairs, etc., etc. Uh, but it is the word that I would like to share with you what is actually something what, yes, is in my heart for a longer time and something what is also connected with situation. Uh, I'm sure that uh, maybe you have heard that before, um, that, you know, the younger generation today, uh, whatever, you know, it's like millennials, that actually I am also a member, right? There are other younger, younger generations. And uh, no, though, though younger, younger generation is called um, generation um, with, uh, that is keeping their heads down. You know, generation that is keeping their heads down or the heads down generation. And of course, I think that we know what I mean, right? Having the phone or tablet, right? It's just you know, walking like, like a zombie a little bit, right? <laughs> heads down, heads down. Uh, but you know, uh, it's not about only them. Yeah, because if we go a little bit deeper, we can see that our whole society is like that. And it's not about the phones or tablets, but you know, it's a, it's a description that is telling us where actually our hearts might be. You know, because uh, look how many times when you try to see or look into the people's eyes, they put it down. Or they, they are so struggle with many problems. And even physically, maybe they are straight out yeah, but like mentally, they, they are focused on only what is down. And they're looking for anything what is like the blinking lights. Yeah? Something what will give them a little bit happiness. Yeah? So instead of being straight and looking up, what they do, or maybe we do, yeah? it's just that will me, bring me happiness. That is my expectation that will fulfill my heart. Yeah? And just keeping the, the, the head down not seeing everything around. Yeah? So it's not about only younger generation stuck with the phones or tablets, but each one of us, we all have these moments when we actually looking for something that will give us for a moment happiness, but still we are just focusing down, not what is up. Yeah? We are afraid to keep our heads up, even we are not trying to lift it up. And Sadly, it happens sometimes in the church, you know, when people are coming and think, they think that um, they have expectations, I would like to have this, I would like to have that, that will make, feel me be better, I will feel more happy, but it's still just looking for, you know, what is down, not looking up, like looking up, yeah. Uh, maybe that's the reason we have the cross up there, that when we are coming in, he is showing us the path that, you know, uh, our life is not looking what is down, anything what can give us a little bit happiness or maybe fulfill our expectations. He's showing us the path we have to have our eyes raised up on him, not on what we think is good, on him. You know, uh, this today's solemnity actually is is meant to help us to raise our eyes up to the Lord, to have a different way of looking, changing our perspective, you know, even in our bodily expression, yeah? to, to feel strong, not because we are strong, but because the Lord is truly risen. He's going up to heaven, and to, next week, He'll give us the Holy Spirit 
He's sending the disciples when they will receive Holy Spirit up, you know, like out of the world, to the world. They were not able to do it before because their eyes were still looking down. You know, there is a Midrash. Midrash, it is a story from um, Jewish religion, something that, you know, Christians, they can use. And it's an incredible story. Uh, this story is telling about uh, the moment when Israelites were going uh, from Egypt to the Promised Land, when they were set free from slavery. And, of course, when they reached Red Sea, everyone will know what is happening. Eh? And behind is the army of Pharaoh. In the front, there is Red Sea. And now what we can do? And, of course, there was a miracle, yeah? incredible one. Uh, so th this story is saying that when they started to walk yeah, through the Red Sea, try to imagine. You know, it's a big miracle. W water on the right side, the walls, the wall of water right and left. It's incredible, right? And this story is saying about one man who was so focused on the condition of the ground. And he was just going and saying, oh, how muddy that is, or my feet does, are getting dirty. Yeah? He was so focused on the condition, how his path looks like, that he didn't see the miracle. So what had happened then? God sent an angel to raise the eyes of this guy, to look on the miracle. Yeah? What is happening? And the moment when he saw what is really happening, how great miracle God sent, he changed his mind. But before, he was just focusing what he was able to see, a muddy ground, something what is not like a really nice path. Yeah? He lost the meaning, the miracle. You know, he completely forgot that the Lord set them free. He set him free. And of course, this Midrash is also saying that after when the Israelites were going, uh, through the desert, and of course, what was happening? They were grumbling, complaining, they have no food, there is too heat, like too, too hot, there is no water, and on and on and on and on. So we know uh, from, the, from the scripture that the Lord sent the serpents. And actually, it was uh, what we know from the Bible, when they were complaining with Moses, he sent the serpents. When they were complaining to God, about God, the Lord sent serpents and fire. And after we know what was happening, to set them free or to save their lives, the Lord asked Moses to prepare a, a long pole to put the bronze serpent. Uh, and people, everyone who raised their eyes up, they will be healed. Those who were, like, uh, be, who were aware of be, being afraid of the serpents, were trying to avoid, you know, to be beaten, many of them we know that died because they focus on what is down there. And, you know, the story is actually telling us, you know, as long as we are focusing on the problems, difficulties, challenges, trials, and on and on and on, if we keep our minds, uh, like, focused on what is here, not what is up there, yeah, slowly we'll find out that our hearts are not getting peace at all. Moses prepared this Paul uh, to save the people, to heal them. And we know that this referring to Jesus who died on the cross. Everyone who is looking up him, he will be healed. Looking at him, at Jesus. So we have two, two ways. Looking down at our feet, contemplating how bad the things are, uh, what should be perfect. Or trying to look up to him. I don't mean, don't get me wrong, that you know we cannot try to solve problems. We have to try to find a way, uh, you know, from the difficulties or challenges. But if that will be just our way of contemplating our life, we will lo we'll lose totally everything, and there will be no space for act of faith. Recently, I read. Actually, I read a very nice book. I forgot the title. Usually I don't remember the titles of the books that I read, especially in English. But the pastor said that the Lord is, when you are a disciple of Jesus, if you want to, to be truly a disciple of him, what he's doing, he's taking you from the safe zone to the faith zone. Because how you can truly say, I trust in the Lord, I worship him, I praise him, as long as you know everything and you can control it's so easy to say, yes, Lord, I praise you and I trust you. But everything I know how it works. 
So the Lord, what is doing? He's taking you to the faith zone where everything you're losing. Yeah? You don't know more, you know, anything else what is happening. And it is a moment when you can raise your eyes up to the Lord. When Joshua was about reaching uh, promised land, he, stand, he was standing across the Jordan River and he looked at Jericho. You remember, no, the big city, giant, gigantic walls. And actually looking at this big city, like the fortress, yeah, uh, like the castle, whatever, uh, you know, it was just losing hope that it's possible to, to, to win with the people living that or even to, to conquer this, this, this place. And it is written in the, the Bible that when he was standing there, uh, he saw, he lifted up his eyes and he saw the angel standing before him with a drawn sword in his hand, encouraging him that, yes, it's possible. When he was lifting his eyes to the Lord, when he was uh, facing the reality, it was actually not possible to do anything, but when he lifted his eyes, he was able, it's possible. That's why, you know, in Psalm 121, we read, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, and only from him. Uh, I said at the beginning that Father Dominic prepared this beautiful decoration, and I think uh, it's a perfect explanation of today's gospel. You know, those, I don't know, we'll keep it for tomorrow maybe as well so people, they can see. You know, those three kids, they are looking up to the Lord. What the Lord is telling us, if you will not become like the children, yeah? if you will be not looking up to him, you will, not, you will not reach the heaven. You'll be not able to make actually uh, the peaceful time in your heart on earth. Because we know that the promise of Jesus about the new life, it is not only about the heaven. It's having the new life here, but it's only the path will start to think in a different way, raising our eyes up to the Lord. So we have to, you know, do that, you know, starting not only focusing on what is here visible, what we don't like or we like or we, we, we expect, whatever. Yeah, we have to start to look at Him. Otherwise, we totally lose everything as Christians. You know, when the disciples ran away from Jesus, um, he came then when he resurrected, and he was trying to lift them up. And that story also is telling us what is the mission of the church. Because the disciples, the first disciples, they, 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 they were the church and, you know, and going on. And that is the meaning of the church, the true meaning of the church, evangelization. It is not just get a temporary joy or entertainment. It's still looking down, making what is good for me. The Lord is telling us is to raise your eyes up. Then when you go outside, you can tell the person who is focused on what is down, that there's totally different view, different perspective. That this perspective will change totally your life. You know, uh, today we can hear that the people's life, you know, we are just biological cells or DNA. Yeah, but the, the, the science is telling that the, the sooner, sooner or later, there will be disintegration. We'll lose our lives. And that is something that maybe put our eyes down. But the Lord is saying it's not the end. It is not our future disintegration. Our future is glorified. And it is in the meaning of our life. Today's gospel also is saying that, and it's something interesting. People are losing what this gospel says. When they were gathered, yeah, they, when they saw the Lord, uh, we read, when they saw him, they worshipped. So it means they were praising to him. But they doubted. How it can be? You know, from one side, they praised the Lord. Maybe they were singing. Yeah? On the other hand, they were doubting. Um, you know, because the doubt always will be in our hearts. Because we are not perfect. The disciples were not perfect. They were not fantastic or well-built people without any doubts. There are the doubts in our lives, in, in the situations. But it's up to us what we'll do in this moment of doubt. If I would just focus on what is here, 
trying to contemplate or find the solution by myself. Or I will just raise my eyes up to the mountain where the Lord's help can come. So if you find today yourself in doubt, you know, you can join the disciples. They're not perfect, like those three kids, lifting eyes to the Lord, you know, from whom the help can come from. You know, we'll never build a heaven on earth. Sometimes we have this temptation to make our life perfect, to make it like the paradise. But sorry to say, but it's not possible. Whatever party will be running this country, whatever president will be running this country, they will not build the paradise or heaven for us. You know? The only way to, to taste the heaven is actually raising our eyes to the Lord to see what is our future. You know, our reality, it is not just here on earth. It's divine life. And it starts with the sacraments. You know, when the Eucharist, when we come to the confession, it is reaching already the, this divine life. So, my brothers and sisters, today, uh, I'm asking you, do not be afraid. Even, you know, there might be some doubts, or maybe there are some things that I don't like. You know, just raise your eyes up to the Lord and make Him the center of your life. He's the center of the church. You know? He is the center of the church, not the priest, not everyone, you know, who is working for the... He is. And, but make Him the center of our hearts he is coming to your life to lift your eyes up, to lift your life up. Amen. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us a man and for our salvation. The Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered then and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who of the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. And life of the world to come. Christ ascends into heaven, not to abandon us, but to be our hope, filled with certainty by this glorious event, we pray. For the Church, empowered by the Spirit, may we faithfully give witness to the Gospel and continue Christ's mission of bringing hope and healing to those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout the world, that God will turn the hearts of the world leaders from violence toward cooperation in facing the challenges that confront all the human race. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are in need of hope, may they be inspired by the ascension of our Lord Jesus and trust firmly that God offers them eternal happiness and the means to obtain it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders in every parish, that they may develop wise practices as public gatherings resume, and that all will assist in following the new ways so that everyone who comes to church may be safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
on this Memorial Day weekend, we pray for those who lost their lives in service of our nation and for all who continue to risk their lives in the military service. We pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed, may Christ, who has gone before us into heaven, prepare a place for everyone in his eternal kingdom. We also pray for those for whom this holy mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for all the prayers and intentions that we placed in our prayer book, and for all the prayers and intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We also pray that through the grace of the ascension, we will be blessed to keep our minds and hearts fixed on the things of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Loving Father, because of the ascension of your Son, our human nature is now at home with you in heaven. May this truth be our lasting encouragement and hope through Christ our Lord. Amen. As deep as night, so great our hunger, Lord, to see your light. The sparrow finds a home need your wing, so may we come to rest where angels sing. have longed to see your loving face to live within your courts for all our days beyond the moon and stars as deep as night so great our hunger Lord finds her home beneath your wing. So may we come to rest where angels sing. Your roads have led us, Lord, across desert sand. We place our hopes and dreams Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise, rise up to the heavenly realms 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder, mediator between God and man, judge of the world and, and Lord of hosts. He ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, was gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Come, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, St. Mark, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honors yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, will be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on the mighty, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ can receive for eternal life. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. 
Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, Rahan, we pray that Christian home may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated here and please be seated there. <laughs> the second homily. Don't be afraid. Jesus is asking us not to be afraid. Uh, you know, it's a such a blessing for us that we can open the church. Um, and as you, know, as you know, already we have the uh, weekly masses. Uh, and next week, actually, we are going to open the church. Um, so it's a, it's a blessing. Um, so, uh, of course, there are some procedures that we have still uh, be aware of. Uh, so we cannot have more than 400 people. So what I think one of the uh, requests is that usually if you are coming at 4 and 10 uh, mass, uh, usually they are really crowded. So try to split. Uh, you know, we don't want to do anything like telling people, you know, what time that they should come or you should come. But, you know, try to be aware that maybe some masses might be more crowded. So try to maybe wake up a little bit earlier and come at 8. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, but first of all, I would like to express my thanks to all of you of your great support, the donations, uh, uh, very kind words uh, through um, you know, the letters, but also on Facebook. It's amazing. And thank you so much uh, for all those uh, supports from you. Uh, may the Lord reward you for everything you do for St. Mark's. And I think uh, it is the last time when we have the Mass like in this way. Uh, and let's hope it will never happen again. <laughs> uh, but I would like to thank all our office staff, uh, Tina, uh, Aggie, uh, Pat, Mary, uh, also Pam, our maintenance, uh, Chris, Larry, music director, Roger, Barbara, also thank you. Uh, Mark was helping our deacons. Thank you so much for you know, support and helping us. And Father Dominic for his hard work, believe me. I didn't serve this time, so <laughs> thank you so much for everything you do. And um, this beautiful image that we have is from Nancy, our parishioner, so also thank her for preparing that. It's really beautiful. Uh, something what we have to keep in our minds, that we have to raise our eyes up to the Lord, because it will focus on everything else instead of Him uh, that will put us down. Yeah? But He is the one who can really lift us up. So to all of you, happy Ascension Day. Uh, may this day and also preparation for the Pentecost renew our hearts, our spirit. So the next week, uh, with the new hearts and minds, with a joyful hearts, peaceful ones, with a lot of patience, we can celebrate this beautiful solemnity of the Holy Spirit who wants to be in us, in our lives. So to all of you, 
uh, happy Ascension Day. May the Lord bless you all. And one more thing, uh, that we have confessions available, but by, a, by appointment. So it means you can call myself or Father Dominic or the office, but it's better if you call us directly because then we can set up the meeting, uh, like the confession. So by appointment only. Uh, so just it is one thing. Did I forget about something else? My memory is good, but short, so. <laughs> Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you truly uh, for being such great uh, members of St. Mark's family. So let's stand and let's receive God's blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you, for on this very day, His only begotten Son pierced the heights of heaven and unlock for you the way to ascend to where He is. May He grant that as Christ, after His resurrection, was seen plainly by His disciples, so when He comes as judge, He may show Himself merciful to you for all eternity. Amen. And may you who believe he seated with the Father in his majesty know with joy the fulfillment of his promise to stay with you until the end of time. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks Thank be to God. God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness of the sinners of the devil. And we pray, and with the outfits of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. <laughs> God.